Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a laptop that's got a pretty decent value proposition. This is the HP OmniBook 5. This is a Windows laptop, but it's running with one of those Snapdragon processors. However, it's not all that expensive, and even on the base tier, you actually get a pretty decent computer with very good battery life for a very low price point. We're going to take a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one has paid for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this starts at $599 for the entry-level version. And I was surprised that even the entry-level version has decent specifications. Now one thing to note is that all of these, no matter which price point you land in on, have a Snapdragon X Plus processor. This is an ARM-based chip. They are very power efficient, but they're different architecturally from an Intel or an AMD chip that you might see on a similarly priced laptop. And the result of that is better battery life most of the time versus an Intel or AMD-based machine, but there are some compatibility issues to think about, mostly around gaming. So games do not run very well on here. We'll look at a few in a minute but everything else does seem to work well. So if you're mostly just looking for a laptop to do Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint, along with some web browsing and media consumption, this is going to be fine. But if you're a gamer, the gaming options are much more limited. And I think you should look at an Intel or AMD based laptop if games are important to you. Now the entry level version has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. This model has a little bit more RAM, 32 gigabytes, and a one terabyte SSD, so it costs a little bit more. But it's nice to see that the minimum spec has 16 gigs of RAM, which I think is definitely more than adequate for the types of things that this laptop is designed for. All of these also have a very nice 14-inch 2K display. This runs at 1920 by 1200. This is an OLED display, so you get very good contrast ratios on it. The display quality is quite nice. It doesn't, though, cover the full spectrum of the DCI-P3 color space. It's only about 95% of it. So it's not something I would recommend for professional video color grading, but it is fine for casual photo organizing and editing. It's just not something I would recommend on the professional side. And it certainly looks a lot nicer than laptops at its price point that don't have an OLED display. The only thing I can find fault with on the display is that some colors tend to look a little oversaturated. So if you have a lot of red on screen, that red is really red, a little bit more than I would like it to be. But beyond that, it does look very nice for its price point. 300 nits of brightness. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on it. This one doesn't have a touch display, but there are versions that do. And the display refresh rate runs at 60 hertz. Now on the top, you've got a webcam that can be used for facial recognition for logging in. There's also a manual shutter here for blocking the lens. And it runs at a 1080p resolution. And because you've got all this Microsoft Copilot stuff built in, you can do some of these onboard operating system video effects where you can do blurs and cartoon effects and a few other things that get updated from time to time. And as you can see, those effects get activated very quickly there. The video quality on the webcam looks very nice. I probably wouldn't be running my Twitch channel off of it, but for web conference calls and that sort of thing, I think you will do very well with it. Now the keyboard is also very nice here. You've got some large well-spaced keys. They are backlit, very comfortable to type on, decent key travel as well. And you've got your trackpad below that. The trackpad is a little squishy to me, but it does uh, work fine and tracks well. I found no issues with uh, using any of the input methods on this device. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you've got two full service USB type C ports here on the side. These are not Thunderbolt ports. They are running with the USB 3.2 standard. So they'll go up to 10 gigabits per second each, but each can take in power and they can also output video. And of course you can connect your USB devices to it. The display does wobble a bit, as you can see here. I wish it was a little bit firmer, especially if you're on a shaky desk like I've got here. Uh, so just be aware of that. On the other side, we've got a headphone jack and a full-size USB-A port, and this also runs at 10 gigabits per second. Now, the weight on this one comes in at 2.84 pounds. That's about 1.3 kilograms. It feels very nicely built, even though the keyboard deck here is plastic. They do have a recycled plastic mix on this, so maybe your water bottle is now your computer doesn't have all that much flex to it, so it feels pretty good and sturdy. 
and then the uh, display lid here has aluminum along with the bottom. So it's got a very good feel to it for something at this price point. And it's also nice to see how well balanced it is as well, because when I lift up the display here, I can do it with just one hand. Now it's got stereo speakers on the bottom front of the laptop. They sound pretty good. They're nice and clear, especially for spoken word. But the range of sound, of course, is not going to quite be there for audiophiles, so you'll definitely want to connect a pair of headphones for the best quality. Now, one of the main reasons to look at an ARM-based Windows laptop is the battery life, and this one is no exception to that. Uh, we were getting 12 to 15 hours easily out of this doing basic work tasks on it, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and some web browsing. Now, if you do something more intense, like finding a compatible game that you might be able to run on it or doing video editing, that, of course, will eat into the battery life more significantly. But I found this one is every bit as good as the MacBook Air that I use quite a bit, and I did not get a low battery warning on this even after a day and a half of picking it up, doing some work on it, and then coming back to it a little bit later. So I think you will have uh, no issues with this getting through the workday as you're poking around with it. So great battery life on it. It runs pretty quiet as well. There is a fan on this one, which actually keeps its performance stable, but the fan is not all that loud and it rarely kicks on given how efficient the processor is. So why don't we take a look now and see how it performs doing some of the things it's designed to do. So why don't we start off here with a little bit of web browsing. We'll boot up the Brave browser and head over to nasa.gov. As you can see here, things render in very quickly. Uh, really no issues browsing the web. I wouldn't expect that out of a modern laptop here. So basic stuff, again, like this is going to do just fine. A little bit earlier, we went over to the, my YouTube channel and checked out a 4K 60 frames per second video. That played back just fine. It had a couple of drop frames when it first started, but it was otherwise able to keep up with that 4K video running at 60 frames per second. So I have no issues with this doing media playback, Zoom calls, web browsing, uh, all of that should be fine. A little bit earlier, I ran the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, and there we got a score of 29.6, and that puts this laptop on par with its peers in the marketplace insofar as its web browsing performance is concerned. And of course, Microsoft has optimized their Office suite for these ARM-based processors, so you will have very responsive performance here uh, doing all of your word processing and other Microsoft Office tasks. So no issues here doing the basics. Now, it's actually possible to do some basic video editing on this laptop, even with an advanced editor. So DaVinci Resolve has an ARM-based version that is optimized for these Snapdragon processors. And I edited a 4K 60 frames per second video on here. Nothing fancy, just some clips strung together. But as you can see here, we were able to execute a transition in real time and not have much lag or stutter there. So that was pretty nice. But something more advanced will tax it a lot more. So for example, I tried to drop in this video filter on top of this clip. And as you can see, it just kind of sits there for a while thinking about it. Now this is always challenging even on a more powerful Intel or AMD based machine. But here it took a lot longer to get that effect to render in. So it's really not usable for advanced video editing. But doing some basic stuff where you string clips together, kind of like what I do on this YouTube channel, this will actually get the job done for you. But of course, gaming is another story. This is Red Dead Redemption 2 that I tried to get to run on the laptop. It just kind of sat here at the loading screen after I got past the main menu, so that wasn't very good. I also tried No Man's Sky here, and I got an error message saying that it couldn't load the game up here either, so that was a bust. But... I found this game, which is the Dark Forces Remaster, an old Star Wars game from the 90s. Uh, this worked well, although the uh, setting screen was a little messed up, but the game was playable and it ran at a very nice frame rate. So I think some older games will run okay on this platform, but all of the newer stuff, even the things that will run on a comparably priced Intel or AMD machine, likely won't run on here. There are some games that can run. There are some developers starting to put some ARM native games out there, but by and large, the game compatibility on this one just isn't there yet. But I was able to get some benchmarks to run. The 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test was what I ran first. I got a score of 1,065 on that. It pretty much lines up with an AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 4750 based laptop I looked at a couple of years back. So you're not gonna get groundbreaking AAA game performance out of this, but 
it should be capable of playing games like Grand Theft Auto 5 and maybe even uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 at very low settings. But because of the ARM-based compatibility issues, you're not going to be able to get a lot of those games to run. But there is some capacity to do that. I also took a look at the 3D Mark Wildlife benchmark test. There we got a score of 3,281 on the extreme version of that test and 11,553 on the regular one. By comparison, you can see what a more recent AMD Ryzen processor will do on those tests. So certainly this is not comparable with those Intel and AMD based laptops you might find at similar price points today, but those laptops don't have the battery life that this one does for running the basic applications it's designed for. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.8%. That means when the laptop is placed under heavy sustained load, it does not lose all that much performance and it's able to maintain its performance because it has the cooling fan. But again, that fan is very quiet and you'll likely not hear it kick on all that often. Now, normally when we get to the end of a laptop video, I like to try out Linux on these laptops to see how it performs. Linux on an Intel or AMD based device is usually very simple. You can boot right up off of an external drive and most of the hardware gets detected. It's still a bit of a complex effort to get these Snapdragon laptops to run Linux. They can, it's possible, people do it all the time, but there's a lot of work to get there, more time than we have in this review. So if you are looking for a laptop that can run Linux, you're gonna have a much better time with an Intel or AMD based one versus one of these Snapdragon devices. But I like this one quite a bit, even though you've got the same compatibility issues we've looked at on other Windows ARM laptops. I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels. It runs the basic applications it's designed for quite well with great battery life. So all in, it's a very nice little casual work laptop, but it's not something I would recommend for power users or gamers. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.